Today's episode, we're going to be doing a snorkel kit for our 2012 Ram 1500. There's some really cool Jeeps here, as you can see behind me, so let's check those out. That box is a monster. <laughs> That's your pre-filter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. The thing's a monster. A little thing in it. All right, guys, we just pulled it into the shop. I'm here with Randy, our tech. He's going to be actually doing the install for the snorkel. About how long do you think it's going to take us to complete this? EV calls for about six hours to do it. Um, yeah, it's a long install. <laughs> if you're going to do it on your own, you're just going to want to take more time to really read those instructions, measure twice before you cut once. All right, so here's some of the common tools that you're going to need for the, uh, the installation. Don't be surprised if you find some dirt under there. Oh, yeah. millimeter wrench to take off the antenna itself. Okay. AEV will supply you with kind of a key that will fit over the top of the antenna mast. Just like that. Okay. And then you need an inch and one sixteenth wrench to remove it. Always be careful not to scratch your fender. It gives way pretty easily. Now it's uh operation time yeah or preparing to do the operation so we just got to stick the template up there and then we'll get our marks and we'll know where to cut so lining up to this keyhole is your main concern you don't want any wrinkles no creases so just slowly work it totally flat All right, boys, there's no going back from here. <laughs> this is the part where they tell you to measure twice, cut once. And you find out when it's your own vehicle, you usually measure six, seven times. And you just still hesitate to pull the trigger. That's yeah. just like the drilling. <laughs> My own vehicles, it always is like that. I'm like, I got to make sure. Yours, no problem. <laughs> <laughs> start off with just like a tiny little drill bit not initially but when you are drilling pilot holes yeah it cuts through the metal a lot easier so you're gonna have a total of 22 areas here you gotta tap with the punch to set the part where the drill bit's gonna go Scratch the paint around the head of the drill. So we do yeah, that's so smart. Many, it's kind of like a stopper. Yeah, that's smart. Yo, look at the size of this thing. <laughs> Constellation at least behind. There's your 22, 22 holes right there. Boom, just like that. Good. This just mask around the areas you're going to be drilling. Uh, protect your paint. You never want to be that guy, you know. Um, this is where we use the step it to now enlarge the holes. holes. Two of them to be 9 30 seconds and 
four of them to be a half inch. So this first hole right here, the bottom of these three, that one and this one, you're going to do it in 9 30 seconds. Okay. And on a step bit, what I always do is I'll wrap tape around the level up from the last step that you're going to be going into with the step bit. That way you know when to stop. Once we're finished with the other holes, what you're going to do is you're going to use a little square file or a small file and then square those holes so it looks like this in the end. The bit ends at a half inch, so I don't need to mark the next, the last step because we're going to be drilling to a half inch. Okay. And we're doing those holes right there. Something to watch out for, sometimes you get tailings off the drill bit and scratch the paint. You want to make sure you walk through this so it doesn't go outside of where you could be cutting. Now the fun part. Double checking myself, he said measure twice. I think it has like a patch there in the metal. Is it a patch? Bondo. You know, like oh, really? Glass or something right there. Huh. Yeah, because that's. Unless there's a insulation on the back of that, but. Yeah, it changes tone. Yeah. Is it, it's all hollow back there, yeah? It's supposed it's to be all hollow. Yeah, it's hollow. Huh. It's, out her dots so you can trace them with either a cutoff wheel or an air saw. Fresh blade on it. So we're gonna connect the dots. As long as the line is good and solid it doesn't matter the rest you're gonna find you're gonna clean up and everything with this thing to after you're done cutting it, you'll use this to kind of like clean the edges nice and clean and then you'll put like an anti-rust inhibitor on it. Alright, ready for a big grand reveal? Ooh! There we go. <laughs> Appreciate that, Randy. No problem. <laughs> Alright, so now we're going to want to clean up the edges. How long have you had your channel up? Uh, for two years now. Try to get this contour nice and square. I'm gonna take a few files and figure out which one works best, but this one looks like it's doing a great job. The next stage of this is gonna be coating the raw metal with like a rust inhibitor so that you know moisture being those environments and water doesn't sit onto the the exposed metal and start to create rust that will creep underneath the paint, start to drip down the sides of it, like that. So you want to stop any particular chance that rust can occur. We're making our way to remove, we're pretty much going to be removing the fender and, and I think we have to go on a couple times just to 
Get the fitment. Get the fitment right. And then I think I'll re re remove a PCM that's in the fender well area, as well as the air box. We'll have to remove the air box entirely so we can build the seal on it that the snorkel will get to, so that way it's watertight. So that's all going to be in the next steps here. Next step would be to disconnect the battery. I'm dis you disconnect from the negative. I'm just see if I can break this loose for you. There you go. I love this thing. One of my favorite tools on the planet. It's like the noisy cricket. So this is a 10 millimeter bolt. Okay. Just kind of behind the headlight here, tucked in. Just remove that out. This bolt in the joining the front bumper cover to the fender. Also 10 millimeter. We got two more bolts down here. So this in this particular ram, it's not there right now, but there is a 10 millimeter bolt that would be right here underneath. Uh, windshield trim corner or because this one had a replacement fender it was omitted at one point and then you got the three ten millimeter bolts across the top here yummy and a lot of times we talked about these little tabs you have to pull out don't always survive. Yeah, I mean, I didn't expect them to survive since it's uh, 2012, you know, yeah. after so many years of being in I the element. I only like to replace them anyways because even if they do survive, they don't have the same retention anymore. Yeah. That's where you start to have a rattly vehicle. And you got three of those little push rivets here, underneath here, and one right here. So the next step we're going to do is remove the air box. So we're going to take off the evap hose, the peep evaporative hose here set up. Um, might as well take, disconnect it from the... So we're going to disconnect your uh, intake temperature sensor here. And the way you do it is you move this little red safety latch back like that. That will now allow you to compress this little thing here and then pull back while you're compressing it. Just disconnects it that easily. It's always yellow on the nut drivers, but the standard size for a lot of these hose clamps is a 5 16 If you can't reach it that way, then you can use a socket or a flathead screwdriver each way. And latch the cover holders, little latches here. So this one has four of them. Yeah. And then you just remove it out of your way right now. See the nice aftermarket air filter in there. Yep. So for this generation RAM, there's some things that are less complicated, which is nice for a change. And the air box will just look right out. See how dirty it is. Ooh. Empty out the stuff that's in the bottom of it. <laughs> what it's for, though, that's the side that gets that's before the filter, so that's where you want it to end if you have to. So you have these little push tabs in here. You're gonna have to flex them to peel out this little the original inlet. Whatever way it works for you. Will she flex? That's the question. Oh yeah, she'll flex. Out with the old. What you're gonna do is you're gonna set it up in here, line it up the way you're gonna want it, and then from there you're gonna mark where the box is smaller. And you'll be trimming that away, so you'll be using this as a guide, as a template. Not as a guide, as a template. I don't really just get the idea. Room 
for rivets that AEV will supply you. So mark them and drill them real quick to 3 sixteenths. So to 3 sixteenths size. 3 sixteenths. So make sure you clean it. I usually leave the other ones in here to help keep it so it doesn't shift when you're doing the, the first rivet. Keeps the plate centered. Next step is we're going to be riveting this onto that adapter plate that we just attached to the airbox. Classics. Now we just gotta trim the plastic. Trim it here and down here to make room for the intake tubes. If you got a pair of kind of like the heavy duty cutters, you can use that for this part instead of the air saw. So all we did for the last um, step was pretty much just cut this little 90 degree angle out of there and kind of trimmed out the plastic. So that little inlet right there could be visible from the side. Prep it for the foam pads and we're using alcohol swabs to kind of clean the area. Trying to see here. Okay, I see. So the fitment is like super tight. Easy is because obviously it's been designed for this. Yeah. I don't see this going. Unless I need to trim here too. It would make sense. All he did was just trim that little little spot right there kind of help with the uh, fitment uh, how strong our products were when we started picking them up as a client but he loved what he did all right so that's not bad like on this side right See, look at you contributing <laughs> hey well, you know I'll do it when I can. There you go. <laughs> Look at that, just like an old glove right there. So next we're going to be attaching the fender, but you're going to only attach on the lower sections behind the headlight. And these two or more parts of the fender, or the two lower ones down here, that will allow that fender to kind of flex out so we can get the upper portion of that intake up in here. Perfect. Yep. So the 
next step to do on here is going to be finding the contact points on the back of this. And you're going to be adding another two pieces of the phone. So they don't really specifically say where. This is going to be your contact area for the windshield mount pillar area, the A pillar. So really kind of just pick two spots along that area. They kind of show you the spread there and put the phone there. Next we're installing the 8mm screws with the fat fender washer on the back side that were those two half inch holes you drew on the outside of that big cutout. So these are going to go in from behind, you're going to loosely attach them to just kind of hold this in place. Now that this is loosely in place, the next step is going to be pushing the fender all the way up so it's pretty much secure. And this is where it's going to lay where, have it lay where you want it to lay. And once that's there, we're going to be marking the upper holes for the area where the this unit's going to attach to the A pillar. We're going to be marking those holes with the marker, and then we got to pull this off again. The next step we're going to be doing is inside the intake tube is two holes where you're going to be having where you're going to do your mounts onto the A pillar. So through those two holes up here, once you get this aligned the way you're going to want it. I'm going to mark those so we can drill them for a, it's like a rubber insert in there that will expand, expanding nut type insert for screws. It's pretty clean. So the best your ability is mark where you want these guys. So once it's done, it's done. We got to unbolt the fender again. We said I use the two bolts. Now we're just doing the, oh, we're not taking the whole fender off. We're just going to be doing it like we put on this intake before. Let's remove these two upper bolts. Peel it back. Be careful to clear the door over here. After we drilled those holes, we drilled the holes to accommodate the half inch walnuts, the rubber version, to go in there. But before we do that, we got to do the protection on the exposed steel now so it doesn't rust. So they just kind of just drop in there and then they're loose now. But when you put the intake on and you start screwing in the screws, so they do it, they will crush in behind and hold it in place. But we got to tighten the fender next. That was the uh, the final step. Now we're just kind of putting everything back together. Put them all half, mostly on. Moment of truth, man. This one's for all the marbles. If you can get it in that that bin, you're zero and three, oh, right? Oh, I see. Let's see. You're zero and. I can't see it, so I'm gonna do a blind. I can only kind of guesstimate where it is because the hood's right in the way. So let's see. Feel good. No. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> oh and four. <laughs> Don't lose this thing down there. That would really. Oh yeah. Be a hunt. The snap on. I wouldn't give up. <laughs> Shop gifts. So with the rubber weld nuts, you do have to keep in mind that these things are not regular steel nut certs. They will easily pull through. That little brass inside them will just cut right through that rubber so you kind of keep tugging at it till you start to feel resist and then you kind of stop so it's it's you use your judgment but just be careful of that buttoning up the intake track making sure we get that hose clamp in the middle here done an easy thing to forget all the bolts in the fender then we gotta do the fender liner uh, the intake tube and top of the lid. That's about it. And uh, the, the trim. The filter separator. Oh yeah, the filter separator. Uh, this generation you had to get back a little bit, catch it on those tabs. We 
make sure you get both of them. I don't know how many of those I see come in here. Actually, you're not in those tabs. If you do not have this thing sealed correctly, you kind of defeat the purpose. Yeah. So. I'm sure AEV has farmed out a few of those calls. And four snaps for this generation RAM. I'm not sure if the newer generation has different points. To keep the smog people happy, you gotta reinsert that one. Now it'll still run without this, but not as good. She's all complete. Alright guys, that's how you install the snorkel kit on the 2012 Ram 1500. Again, thank you so much Randy for all your hard work. Um, I appreciate it. If you guys are in the area or in the surrounding areas, be sure to check out Chapman Customs uh, for all your off-road needs.